are back in Tallahassee, Florida, getting ready for the Camel Shootout. Look at this pit. Solid clay, yet no ruts. That means that the track is still soupy and may not be able to offer the traction these drivers are hoping for. The four quickest qualifiers are back and ready. And Ron Smith's Gold Fever starts things off. Unbelievable run. Did it go out of bounds or is it still okay? Jim Weber says it's okay down there at the finish line. And so does Smith. There it is. Less than a foot away from going out of bounds. The incredible Gold Fever sets the pace at 1.882 seconds. That's actually quicker than he ran during qualifying. And Mark Watros' Team Rancho Thunderbird would like to improve. shuts the engine down a little early and that may have hurt him the elapsed time 1.951 seconds won't be enough to take over the lead watch Rose's conservatism hurt him there now it's Jeff Acker the insanity roaster out of Milwaukee he shuts off early as well he barely stops in time and the elapsed time 1.80 seconds a simply amazing run. The helmet comes off, and as a touring professional, there is nothing sweeter than taking over the lead with one more man to go. Who would have ever thought that this course would have come around like this? I don't know. It sure did. It's starting to hold power pretty decent, and I don't know. As long as he can get it stopped, should be able to get a nice time, and I don't know. There's one stiff one back there yet. We'll see what happens. One real tough one. Great job. One eight zero. Oh. Thank you very much. Incredible. Looking at the replay, the launch was perfect, and he shut it down about three feet early in order to stop. He takes the lead, and this man must unload a big one to take the number one spot and the victory. Tom Martin ran 1.899 seconds in qualifying. You just saw Jeff Acker improve 13 hundredths from his qualifying run, and Martin must do the same if he expects to win this event. He's got to go quicker than Acker's 1.803 second effort. readying himself and Martin comes completely out of the pit all four wheels airborne at the halfway mark Martin slams his fist down in disgust Jeff Acker wins the super modified championship and he looks like he can't even believe it look at Martin airborne in the mid-range he stopped in plenty of time the elapsed time 1.862 seconds unbelievable run considering the problems he had the crowd can't believe it the world champ gets beaten again in 1991 by the man who is chasing him down to stop the tom martin hierarchy in super modified mud racing as the helmet comes off of certainly the killer in the super modified ranks you have to wonder what's going through his mind if i had to guess tom was i right in assuming that you shut the engine off because you couldn't see anything because the front end was so high yeah, I thought I was going left on the track, and I had to back out. You know, it felt pretty good, but if you can't see, you gotta, you gotta back out. Well, you shut it off at an honest 50 feet. It was uh, literally just past half track that you shut it off maybe 55 feet, and it's still went 186. Would it have been good enough, do you think? Oh, I think it would have. I think it would have, but, you know, you drive on instinct, and uh, I didn't want to DQ, and if you can't see, you can't go. One thing's for sure, after so many years of dominating this class, you know these guys are breathing down your neck. Oh, yeah, but we got a long season to go, and I'm hanging on second. It's going to be tough. Indeed it is, but you still got second place here tonight. Now I'll add some points up, so great job. Second place is pretty good. Well, Peter Roth from the Camel team congratulates Jeff Acker of the Insanity Machine. Acker's got to be thinking about that possible world championship and becoming the first man to knock Martin out of the number one spot in this sport since 1987. Well, certainly with everybody gunning for three-time world champion Tom Martin, Jeff Acker was one of the guys that was breathing right down his neck. But this time around, it was a little bit different. You pulled it off, and you've got to be thrilled. Yes, I am very thrilled. You get around stiff competition like that, and you definitely accomplish something. Very seldom do we see a mud racing event pick up in the last time. Very seldom do we see a track get better. Do you have any idea why that happened here? Well, they brought the clay down from Georgia, from what I was told, and once you start getting the ruts, it starts getting pretty sticky, and you can start turning some faster times if you don't have to deal with the ruts going through the pit. And that, They seem to straighten out, so everything seemed to work pretty decent.
And one thing I should bring up is that when a pig gets sticky like that and gets ruts in it, it also beats the heck out of the guys running in it. You took some really hard rocks in that. Yeah, it does. It gets it rocks you around pretty good, and I hit my head on a roll bar a little bit, but that's what the padding's for. Well, despite the brutal ride inside the cockpit, it was brute horsepower and driving talent that won this event for Acker. And this is only the beginning of a rivalry that should last the entire season with this man. Three-time world champ Tom Martin in a super trooper. We won't find out the winner of this one until the fall. In the meantime, back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, we've got the Monster Truck Championship Dash ready to go. The Carolina Crusher of Gary Porter takes on Northern New York's own John Kwasniewski. The Buffalo Drummer has made it back from that horrible crash seven days ago to do battle in the championship round here in Philadelphia. They're gone. The whole shot goes to Porter, and he stretches it out at the finish line. The Carolina Crusher comes north to defeat the Yankees and win the championship bout. Unbelievable Jectrum. We saw an incredible monster truck final round. Here's Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher on his winning run. But credit certainly has to be given to John Kwasniewski on an incredible runner-up coming back from that horrific crash. Chris Chapman has our winner down on the floor. Gary Porter, driver of the Carolina Crusher, has to be probably the happiest man in Philadelphia right now. I am. We worked on the truck a lot right before the race today, and I didn't have at one time an idea that we would even race today. I had some problems with my four-link bars and suspension and stuff, and uh, the guy with me you know, re really worked on the truck a lot, and we came in and it paid off. So how does this make you feel? Does it make you feel like you're going to come back out some more in the 1991 season and kick some butt, or are you going to go back to the Carolinas? <laughs> no, I think I want to stay out and take the points win this year. Good luck to you, Gary. Okay, thank you. Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher take the victory here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. That's all this time. Good night, everyone. I'm Chris Chapman, and we'll see you next time. Well, that's it from Tallahassee, Florida, here at the Tallahassee Civic Center. You couldn't have asked for a wilder event. Until next time, I'm Brett Kuttner. Thanks for being with us.